Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back along to another episode of the Dairy Man's Diary. My name is Frank, as always. You join me, we're out in the 68 today. We're booking it long, quite frankly. We're flying towards the uh, a new. We bought another piece of land, to be honest. Uh, this was a surprise. It came through some connections that I've only just recently made, which was a connection through the connection of my agronomist. Uh, and they were, um, yeah, we bought a little bit of land there. It's about 12 acres of grass. So what we're going to do is, it's in need of a little bit of lime, so we've already got some hole down there. So today, we're going to go and have a look. We're going to get that done. We're going a long way around, unfortunately, because we don't own any of the land between where we had to pick up the beast that's behind me uh, and the uh, and the land itself. So we're going to have to go and do that. That's not a problem, though. We'll we'll, uh, we'll take a bit of a spin, and then we can have a look. And uh, We're doing something a little bit different today. We are... As many of you will know if you've watched any of the previous videos, we've been trialing and demoing a Plas Scorpion. Now, we've still got it, still doing okay, uh, but the problem is I wanted to kind of have a little bit of a look-see around the market, see what other options there are from some of the big competitors, and we've been able to kind of queue that up, really. It took a little bit of uh, finagling over the phone. Some uh, sales reps weren't too keen to give their, their models that they had available to compare with, but we did that in the end, we got there. And we'll have a look, see, oh, there's a lot of weeds in that field. Oh, spray much? Good lord. Uh, so, we're going to just take a right down, a left down here, sorry. And then let's just go and have a bit of a look in here, see what's happening. And see how we can get cracking along here. We'll, uh, we should find at least that we're going to be... Uh, there's going to be my three tiny handlers are down there. I've got the, the class scorpion leaves after today, so we've had a good run on that. We know what that's capable of. Really tremendous uh, vehicle, to be honest. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful tiny handler. Really is nice. So hopefully, the same could be said for uh, what we're about to come down and see. As we just slow it down, and we're coming into here. It's a beautiful, beautiful winter's day here as well. Absolutely stunning. And in we come. This is a. Oh, we need to do something about this gateway here. We need to get this level off because it is brutal. But look at what's behind us. You got a tornado three. This is a Joskin spreader. It's an absolute mountain of a Joskin spreader as well. It's absolutely huge. But we're going to use it. We've got some lime at the top here that we need to put into this field. What's not spread here, which will probably be in all honesty quite a bit of it, we're going to put elsewhere as well. Now this spreader being so big. We're likely going to put like a few bucket loads into, uh, from each of the telehandlers into it and we'll see just how we get along. Uh, so we'll just probably park this about here for now, I think. Uh, and then we will see what it looks like. Yeah, look at the castle there. It's absolutely stunning. We'll just probably shut that off. We don't need to be... We're not going to be going for a second or two here anyway uh but yeah like i said nice and crisp so this is the field this is what we bought here and uh, right next to the train tracks that are raised up you see quite a, some beautiful trains flying along there as you're doing your thing uh i've already seen an old steam engine come along this uh today looks fantastic uh but more importantly perhaps more importantly at least we bought this land here these are now our sheds obviously we're not gonna do much with that one and the one in the back there is not too much, but that could be storage. It looks like there's an old tractor in there. Might have to have a look at that. Um, but here we are. Here are the three. Obviously, we know in the middle we've got the class scorpion there. That is a bit of a beast. And it's been accompanied on either side by its competitors, the Manitou and the, the Mantu MLT, I believe that one is. And the JCB Agri Pro. This is, uh, in all seriousness, probably one of the market leaders, I would say, really, in terms of what it does there. JCB have always led the way, and this is no, no exception, really. So... Uh, it's not looking too bad there. Now, what we will do is probably have a play around in all of these at some point. Now, we're pushing lime uh, and loading lime up there, which is not the most challenging of tasks, but it's always good to have a bit of a, a go of it anyway and see. Uh, so we'll we'll see how we get on with that today, and then we will uh, we should be looking good. Now, we just need to have a bit of a look around some of these tiny handlers first. Uh, we'll leave the class for now because we we can we've got a good benchmark a good control a very good benchmark to be honest there the power and the mobility of this thing it is probably one of the longer uh of the the three machines but so nimble so so nimble the mountain 2 is obviously gonna be the most compact there uh it's still plenty of power in it though as well so that'll be uh, quite useful for some of my my buildings uh, we just got the each with the bucket on there. We didn't do any extra work there with uh, hydraulic flow rates or anything like that. Although you can probably dial those down, I'm sure, 
Uh, but yeah, JCB is probably the one I'm looking forward to getting into the most. Uh, really nice looking uh, pickup hitch on the back there as well. Beautifully well made, really nicely modeled uh, and designed here. So that is pretty good. And we're gonna we're gonna get into this one first of all and have a bit of a play with it. Really, see what it is like inside. And all right, so in here, this is it's actually. A, little, a bit sparse, you know, it's got all the buttons and switches you need on here, but it's, as far as telehandlers go, it's not doing too much, which, again, perhaps isn't the worst thing in the world. And we'll fire it up there, and uh, let's just have a bit of a, a, a go with it. Uh, so, I've got my controls on the joystick here, oh, there it goes. There we go. That is on the rocker switches there, perfect, and then we can... He'll crowd the bucket there as well. Fantastic stuff, and off we go. So, looking good. Very nice and nimble here. Has crab steer, uh, as you'd expect there, as, as well as uh, forward or front wheel steer only as well, which is pretty handy. Uh, and we're just going to have a bit of a blast into here and see what this one's like. We'll put a couple of bucket loads in, because this field itself is not going to take too much to do. Uh, and we'll have to see... We'll, we'll get this one filled up and then we can always uh, we'll jump onto the Manitou to do the same anything that's left line wise and there will be quite a bit left I'm sure we're going to cart over to some of our ground which we have tested again uh, and we know that we need to put it into there okay that one looks like it's pretty good to go there nice and fluid actually nice and quick and smooth on the uh, on the load and load really really is uh, there you go good bucket on this one as well nice I would push through that. Wish we did have a little bit of muck that we could have had to go in there as well, because that is always a nice, true test of a uh, of a telehandler's uh, ability. It was a bit light on the back end there, uh, but anyway, there we go. So, like I say, we're just going to have a quick little go by uh, loading in side by side comparison with the two of them. The transmission on this is uh, beautiful. Oh, there goes the train though. Hello to you. A beautifully smooth transition on here. It has, I believe, it's got like a barrier box when you get into uh, when you get into the road. Uh, back here, uh, yeah. Like so, the top two gears that I believe I'm right in saying that are kind of like a barrier speed transmission, uh, and then the bottom two there are like a. Uh, Oh, you have a, a lower, a first and a second range. Do let me know if you've used this uh, AgriPro. Uh, if you use it on the farm already, I'd love to know what you think of it. Uh, now we're into the MLT Manitou here. Uh, we'll have a go with this one. We do have this on the JCB for a little bit longer, so we are going to have a play with them back at the yard, but I just want to give them a bit of a go here, really. See how we get on with them. Uh, nice power. Oh, my. What have we got coming through here? Look at that. What an old beautiful train on this. Hello to you. What a beaut. What an absolute beaut. This, uh, back to the Manitou though, you do have that ergonomic Manitou grip. Some people swear by it, couldn't have anything else. I'm not so, uh, not so enamored with it. I prefer a joystick, I think, but, uh, maybe it's just something you have to get used to over time. Uh, it doesn't quite seem as smooth to me with that. I'm not quite used to it, perhaps that's just what it is. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see, see how we get on with it as we go. But yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one, that is for sure. And around we go here. Put one more load in with this. Nice visibility on the top there again though. Yeah, I'm just not quite so happy with it, it's a little bit jerky, but maybe that's just all operator error, we'll have to wait and see as we go through. Uh, what we'll do is probably just have a bit of a crack on with Ooh, there we go. Easy, Frank. There we go. Uh, we'll just have a crack on with what we've got in there now. See how we get on with the field. We can always add more in there. And like I say, whatever's left, we're just going to take away up to the uh, up to the other uh, one of the other fields there. All of our fields have been uh, sampled now, and they're back ready to go as well. Uh, so we'll see. And just by comparison, do you know what? Let's just. Uh, that's not it gets a little bit light at the top there we'll leave that on um but yeah looking good this is a slightly bigger bucket on here than that one there i think and yet the jcb was still a little bit more a little smoother uh but yeah, it's very very interesting and we'll jump on into the scorpion as well once we're done in the second gear just to see how that one handles uh, this line as well because uh, i don't actually think i've done a line with it done a lot of things there's no uh no lime yet there you go 
plenty good visibility around all three of them. You cannot argue with that at all. It's uh, it does look good, even when you get this high up there. It's a little bit more stable, I find. Uh, and let's have a look back into the class as well here. Yeah, this one we've had about for a week now, so it's actually maybe a little bit more than, but it's doing very, very well. Uh, I do have to get rid of this one. But like, the, like I said, the Torian that we would be getting rid of, the class was is good. The class Torian, just too small, too lightweight. Either of these options would be great. And what we probably do when we get one of them is actually look to get one of those front-mounted bale shredders, I think, just so we keep a bale shredder each yard, speed the job up a little bit uh, when we need to. And that might eventually maybe replace the Massey, we don't know. Uh, it's just the ideas that we're thinking about there as we go on there. But, you know, these things you always kind of want to think through and make sure you're, you've got the right approach there, I always think. i put one into there. And then we'll put this little load in here as well. There you go, fantastic stuff. And back we go. All right, and so with that, we're looking pretty good, pretty good indeed. And just gonna put you about there, lift you up as well. Gonna leave the engines on. Main reason we're doing that for right now is to make sure we keep the hydraulic oil flowing through there, because yeah, they are looking good, but I don't want to cause any issues by those starting to dip down there without any pressure. So I wouldn't be advised. A lot of noise, but hey, looking good. Similar sort of reach for the. Um, across the JCB and the Manitou. The Scorpion does have an additional boom in it though, so can't ever see myself needing to tip that high if I'm, if I'm being brutally honest. It's a mighty straw stack, but I guess you never know. You'll, you'll always never really know what lies ahead, so that's an option. Uh, we're going to jump into the 68 over right now. Get that fired up. Uh, and then let's just get ourselves over to the side here with there is a river here, we're going to try not to go too close to the river because we don't want to stick a whole bunch of lime straight on into the river there. That would not go well with anyone's measures. Uh, lift up the back door here. And you know what, we haven't got our GPS on, we have now. Okay, that's in the ground there. We'll just roll forward quickly. I like to get that done before I have to uh, start worrying about spreading anything and speed and run that. Uh, okay. All right, and so back we come. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? Uh, easy, does it? Now, there would have been a way to cut straight through that building. Uh, all that, what looks like a biogas plant behind you, but I don't have access there. don't have any uh, any kind of agreements to come through. So we won't be doing that. Uh, we'll just have to go the long way around, really. And oh, there you go. That's the back on. And that's us away. Got it. The cruise control on there as well. We don't want to go too fast. We want to keep it nice and steady. And look, perfect stuff. I think you agree that looking from afar, though, all those telehandlers do look good. I mean, the JCB is typically the the kind of the flagship, if you will. You know, British made as well, which is always a plus. Want to support the local industries here. Uh, but yeah, that class is that class is really kind of pushing the boundaries there. It looks very, very impressive, I must say. Uh, and fortunately, we've got a little bit more lime here that we can load up. We'll get that taken over. We're going back up to uh, the, the ground between farm one and two. Spreading it in there as well. Uh, and then we've got some muck to spread still, but we're probably gonna wait a little bit longer to do that. Uh, and we'll see how that looks. But yeah, this field, this, the opportunity to buy this lime in bulk was was on a plate, so we, we took it. And yeah, we've got a nice little field here. So this is gonna be, uh, we're gonna put some nitrogen onto here as well. Get this really fired up for all things. Um, first got silage really. And we'll be looking good in the new year. But yeah, it's uh, coming along nicely. Coming along very nicely. We'll just go all the way down this side here. And see what we're looking like inside the, the hopper. Huge, huge spreader. I must tell you, it's massive, but it's still very impressive. Uh, nothing that the 68 can't pull along, though, that's for sure. I wonder if there's any fish in there. Okay, so I hope you're all doing very well. Do let me know down below what you're working on, what is going on as always, and uh, I'll be as just really intrigued to see your comments on the, the telehandlers there. Which one you find is the best? Which one would you buy if you had the option to to replace the, the Torian? Uh, yeah, because it's always, uh, always very intriguing. And yeah, let me know in the comments there. We are definitely looking to replace the, the Torian at one point. 
Uh, so hopefully sooner or later, I want to have it in for the, the peak winter and uh, back into the busy period in the spring. So it would be arriving probably sooner rather than later. Uh, it's assuming we can you know, get my get my hands on some really. Let's just go up this side here. Probably not go that close up to the bank there. We're not going to get too far. It's going to shatter off the uh, the side of the bank. It is a beautiful day here though. I really cannot complain about what's going on outside. It is dry, it is sunny, and it is a bit frosty, so it's nice and crisp, which is perfect conditions, really. Absolutely perfect. But we're putting quite a heavy dosage on here. This field was very acidic uh, when the soil sample came back, so uh, by putting lime down there, being an alkaline base, it does bring that pH level back to a neutral, uh, which is always what we want to see. Uh, Grass-wise, we've got some samples of the grass away. Who knows at the moment? Who knows? Uh, but we can certainly look into affecting that one. We're just going to crop off it and then we'll probably look to reseed it over the summer uh, if we need to. Uh, this has been in grass though for about five years, so it's likely that it's going to need a little bit of something just to give it a bit of a kick, you know, so we'll see what we can do there. Uh, yeah, ultimately, this is going to be my day and really I, I class myself as being quite lucky that my day consists of playing with telehandlers, demoing a nice, or like leasing a big John Deere, uh, John Deere? That's a Joskin. Leasing a big Joskin spreader. And get in cracking, really. So watch this space, and I will let you know how we get on there. If you do have any other questions, though, do let us know. And uh, we will be sure to see what we can do. For right now, just going to stick up the drone for a little bit. And uh, we will see what we get going with. Always think of you when spring comes. Like it's something in the air at that time. Don't know why. Always dream of you when spring comes. Like the heat on my skin takes me by to the time Met you on a Friday Halfway out at the door of the club Playing soul on the weekends Stayed in bed till Wednesday Fell in love with you right there and then I was young, couldn't see that <laughs> We have still got a little bit left in here actually, so what I'm going to do I feel like I'm just going to stop about here. We're going to load up quickly with the... Uh, put a couple loads of together with each of the different telehandlers uh, And then we're going to go and take the JCB up to farm 1 Where we're going to park up there because we're going to be using that for feeding up later on here Okay, and the uh, spring... We have the flow on that, I don't like it. Very impressive, okay and up we go, let's just go and tip this in. I find this to be a bit smoother as well, just handling. I don't know if it's just uh, what the difference is, but it certainly feels that it's just all in all a little bit smoother. Uh, out of the the two new Teddyhanders here, I'd say this is definitely edging it over the mountain too, but it's not by much. Not by much, we're going to stick this into here. Uh, what we'll do is then come back down uh, with the Land Rover. Get that... Uh, Get this finished to take the JC the John Deere back up and then we can get some more some pieces taken care of there really so we should be good uh, get out uh, shake it about a bit there we go now we're done perfect stuff all right then and we are gonna just skedaddle in this one I think I'll put one more with the I'm gonna just for safety, I think I'm just going to switch these off and lower those sort of arms down there. Okay. And uh, we we'll come around here. Let's just stick this load in here as well. This is a nice little nimble thing. I particularly do like how low that boom is actually there. It's very compact. Oh, it is very nice. Uh, I wonder if it's just a little bit light, if we're doing a little muck work and things like that. It could be a little bit light, we'll have to give it a bit of a test over the next couple of days. See how it gets cracking along. Uh, road speed's going to be interesting, we're going to take this one out. There's a bit of a, a few hills that we have to go up uh, beyond the other side of the castle there. So that'll be interesting to see for sure. Uh, we're going to try that right now with the... Uh, with the JCB, and we'll see how we get on that. Yeah, that, the little ergonomic design I'm not quite so comfortable with, I must admit. 
maybe that's just uh, time and patience. Alright then, like I said, lovely looking at old tractor in there. We'll have to go and have a look at that at some point. See if we can get a run in. Uh, see if we can get a start. Uh, but for right now, let's just go and knock off the John Deere as well. And we'll get ourselves away in the JCB for a bit of a spin. Okay then, so let's just spin on over. Nice rapid speed in this transmission though. It really does get booking along here. Oh, actually, what we need to do here as well is this probably come to a stop about here because we need to change the steerings uh, from four wheel to front wheel. Okay, we're good. Some lights on there as well. Not going that way. Yeah, we didn't get around there very well. I don't know what, that was a bit of a rough terrain to come around. Oh well. Okay, so down we go and off we go. We're not too far away though, but we're gonna have a bit of a drive anyway. Come back and do the same drive in the Manitou as well, make sure we get a good fair test of it. But keep an eye out for more of this coming from me across the course of the week. Scorpion's going back though, so we know what we've got from that one. We'll have to see how the rest fare up uh, across the course of the next few days. Until then though, thank you ever so much for watching. My name is Beat Frank. I do hope you have enjoyed this episode of A Dairyman's Diary, and we will see you all in the next one. Do stay safe, enjoy what you're doing as always, folks, and we'll catch you later.